hello students good day and welcome back to this channel in today's video we are going to look at the topic probability we are going to talk about the probability of an event sample space and all of that now if you are new here consider subscribing to this channel do well to like this video and share this video to all your friends now let's focus on today's topic so what is probability probability is the likelihood of an event to occur or not to occur probability is the likelihood of an event to occur or not to occur now consider a to be an event then the probability of a is the number of favorable outcomes of a divided by the total number of outcomes so the probability of a is the number of favorable outcomes over the total number of outcomes So before we consider some examples on how to calculate the probability of an event, let's talk about what we call the sample space of an experiment. So the sample space of an experiment is basically the set of all the possible outcomes, the set of all possible outcomes of an experiment so the sample space is the set of all the possible outcomes of an experiment now let's consider three cases or three scenarios so for case one consider the experiment of tossing a fair coin once what are the possible outcomes that can occur? So if you toss a fair coin once, you can either have a head or a tail. So basically, you have two possible outcomes, either a head or a tail. So the sample space for this experiment is head or tail. Now let's consider the second case. We are going to consider the experiment of tossing a six-sided die once. Now the possible outcomes that can occur are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. So the sample space for this experiment is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. Now in each of the examples, the experiment was performed once. Now a single performance of an experiment is known as a simple experiment. Many experiments can be considered as combinations of two or more simple experiments and we call this compound experiment. So now let's consider the third case. We are going to consider the experiment of tossing a six-sided die twice. Now the total number of outcomes that can occur is 36. Now one way of determining the number of elements in the sample space is by using this formula. You can use the indices approach. So because we have six different elements in the sample space, when you toss a six-sided die once, you are going to have six exponent two because you are going to toss the die twice. So this is the number of outcomes of tossing a single die and this represents the number of times that you toss the die so in all we are going to have 36 different elements in the sample space now we can use a table to find the set of all the possible outcomes that can occur Now let's fill out the table. So the first numbers are going to be the numbers that appear on the first toss 
and the second numbers are going to be the numbers that appear on the second toss. So we are going to have one, one. So the first one from the column and the second one from the row. So for the next one, we are going to have one, two, one, three, one, four, one, five, one, six. So these are the set of all the possible outcomes of this compound experiment. We have 36 outcomes or 36 coordinates in all. And as I said earlier, the first number of each coordinate is the number that appears on the first toss and the second number is the number that appeared on the second toss. So now let's move away from that and let's talk about the certain event, the impossible event and equally likely events. An event A is said to be a certain event if and only if A is sure to happen. Now let A be the event of obtaining a positive integer less than 7 when a 6-sided die is tossed once. So set A is equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 6. Now let's also list the set of all the possible outcomes of tossing a six-sided die. So the sample space is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Now since all the elements in set A are the same as the elements in the sample space, we say that the event A is a certain event. which means that event A is 100% sure to happen. Now we can as well put it this way. Since whenever you toss a six-sided die, you are going to obtain a positive integer less than seven, we say that the event A is sure to happen or the event A is a certain event. Now let's talk about the impossible event. Now considering the same scenario, let B be the event of obtaining a 7 when a 6-sided die is tossed once. Now since you cannot obtain a 7 when you toss a 6-sided die, event B is said to be an impossible event. So that set B is represented as a now set or an empty set. Now let's move on to equally likely events. Suppose that five identical balls are numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, and then 5 are placed in a box. Now if a ball is selected at random from the box, then all the five numbers have the same chance of being selected. Hence, they are said to be equally likely. So equally likely events are events with an equal chance of occurring. Equally likely events are events with an equal chance of occurring. So let's consider some examples. So for example, one, three fair coins are tossed once. A, write down the sample space. B, list the following events i we have set a exactly two heads appear set b 
no head appear set c at least two heads appear and then c the probability of event a occurring the probability of event a occurring so let's solve this question or this problem together so let's start off with e we are going to write down the sample space now we are told from the question that three fair coins are tossed once now when you toss a single coin once you can either have a head or a tail so the possible outcomes are a head or a tail now for the second toss if you had a head for the first toss then you can either get a head or a tail for the second toss and if you had a tail for the first toss you can either have a head or a tail for the second toss now let's do same for the third toss so you are going to have either a head or a tail a head or a tail a head or a tail and then a head or a tail now using this tree diagram let's write down the sample space for this experiment so we have head 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 the next one we have head head tail then we move on to head tail head and then head tail tail next tail head head tail head tail 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 head and then lastly we have tail 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 so this is the sample space for this experiment now let's move on to b i we are to list the following events a exactly two heads appear so for exactly two heads we have head head tail head tail head and then tail head head okay so we are going to write down these three elements so head head tail head tail head and then tail head head so that is for set e now i i no head appear so for no head appear then we only have this which is t t t tails 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 now for i i i at least two heads appear so it means that we should get two heads or more here we have three heads you are going to consider this here we have two heads we are going to consider we also have two heads we are going to consider here we have only one head so you are not going to consider this and then also here we have two heads so when we talk about at least two heads then we have four different elements so let's write down the set c so we have head 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 tail head tail head and then tail head head so these are the elements for set c so now let's solve for c so for C, we are going to find the probability of event A occurring. So the probability of event A occurring is equal to the number of outcomes of event A divided by the total number of outcomes in the sample space. So the number of outcomes of event A is 1, 2, 3. 
so that is 3 over the number of outcomes in the sample space is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So 3 over 8. So this is the probability of event A occurring. Now let's move on to the second question. So for the second example, in a class of 40 students, 25 are girls and 15 are boys. What is the probability that a student selected at random is A, a girl, and then B, a boy? Now let's solve this question together. We are told from the question that the number of students in the class is 40. We have 40 students in the class. And the number of girls in the class are 25. And the number of boys in the class is 15. We have 15 boys in the class. Now A, we are asked to find the probability that a student selected at random is a girl. So the probability that a student selected at random is a girl is equal to the number of girls in the class divided by the total number of students in the class. So we have 25 girls divided by 40 people in the class or better still 40 students in the class. 5 goes into 25 5 times into 40 eight times so the probability that a student selected at random from the class is a girl is five over eight now let's solve for b the probability that a student selected at random is a boy so that is equal to the number of boys in the class divided by the total number of students in the class Number of boys in the class is 15, so 15 divided by 40, and this is equal to 5 goes into 15 3 times and into 40 8 times. So the probability that a student selected at random from the class is a boy is 3 over 8. So that's it for today's video. Thanks for watching and see you in my next video. Bye bye.